Come on, we lift our hands to you tonight, Lord. We lift our hands in words. And we bless your holy name. And we bless your holy name. Come on, tell them again. You deserve the glory. Come on, sing it tonight. And the honor, Jesus. And the honor. And so we'll pay it to you tonight. I lift my hands in. I lift my hands in worship. And I bless your holy name. You do miracles. You do miracles. There's miracles in this room tonight. It's going to bless this place, the place of worship, the place where the presence of the Lord is. And when I went to Africa and I heard this song, I cannot begin to tell you the miracles that have taken place since the Lord has dropped this song in America. And it's simple. And it says,
It says, How excellent is your name. How excellent is your name. How excellent is your name. you you can rejoice in advance and because his word can't lie you can tell the devil amen hey! it ain't nothing else you can do about it amen somebody in the building need to say amen come on everybody open your mouth and sing it from the top about you 
my Lord if nobody else wants to praise you I will take my last breath and I will worship you because you're marvelous in your ways oh God I see your throne and it's splendor and I see the sparks all around you I see the fire of love in your eyes for me oh Lord how unworthy to I stand here I'm so grateful that you even see me I say hallelujah I say hallelujah or I see so beside for a mahai obi asote how excellent is your ways oh god you are healing this place you are delivering in this place and none of us will be the same oh Lord just opened up in the spirit we're standing in an open heaven and what I want you to know tonight is that what the Lord is going to do tonight he said I don't need your faith because I'm going to do it unto your faith he said what I'm going to do for you when I get through it's going to cause you to believe me I don't need you to trust me first just need you to praise me first somebody in this building open up your mouth I want your hand somebody to believe what he's saying he said what I'm about to do for you it's going to cause you to believe me come on somebody open up your mouth open up your mouth
You know, the Lord told me that when I would begin to speak like this, it would take people a minute to grab it. But I speak under the unction of the Holy Ghost and he said, all things have been finished. And he said, in this building, if you're here tonight, he's putting an amen in your situation. It'll shine. All I need is about three people to praise him and believe it. Hey, hallelujah. Amen. I just need about three people to just go to praising him. Because he said he's putting an amen in your situation. Hey! I'm going to say it one more time. He's putting an amen in your situation right now. You believe it just give him a wave offering as you take your seat my god i feel his presence there are literally angels in this building right now and I promised the Lord in this next dispensation that I would not refrain from saying what I see. And they are angels of help. The Lord said, I'm helping you. He said, you're in this building and your situation is at home, but I'm helping you. And all I need you to do is give me an amen wave. Give me an amen wave. honor the Lord tonight for his goodness and for his mercy and his grace and for all that he has done and is doing and for his marvelous ways and his works and his matchless name. Tonight is so divine. I'm honored to have been the person that was chosen to be in this atmosphere tonight. I'm honored and I'm humbled. And I kept trying to keep myself from crying and I was. And not because I never been here before, I didn't think I would ever be invited, but because I know in the spirit realm from prayer 
that we in a divine moment and we in a divine place and that if you're in this place tonight you're not here by accident if you're in this place tonight even the purpose by which we have been called here and summoned here is not by chance and I honor the Lord for the sensitivity of the man of God. I honor the Lord for you, Apostle, for your sensitivity to God and for your, your passion for the people of God to experience dimensions in God. Pastor Browning, for the, your tenacity for women of God to know the dimensions of God. And even as I attempt to, to speak from the throne and speak on behalf of what the Father has sent me to say, I am moved in my spirit that we find pastors and apostles and bishops that have a passion and a desire to know what the kingdom is saying. And many people are ministering and can minister from the earth up. But the next dispensation of preaching will be from heaven down. From heaven down. Thank you, musicians. From heaven down. And I say that because what the Lord has been speaking and what he has done in my life since the last time I have been in this building and been around the world almost and to Africa and got to Africa and had a supernatural encounter. Met the presence of the true and living Savior and met the presence of Jesus and what he desired to do in the body of Christ. And as I began to pray, while I was in Africa, the Lord began to say to me that he was getting ready to send me on a divine journey. And the divine journey would be that those that would invite me we will all be sitting in a divine time and there would be some things that God would speak in our lives that will flip us and change us and we would never be the same so I'm not coming as one that is coming to preach to you I'm coming as one that we may be joined in partnership for the open heaven to speak down into our lives and change us in the core of our bellies where we will never change back again. I'm talking about the divine mind of God. Somebody said the divine mind of God. Somebody said the divine mind of God. You saying that like you just saying it like we just saying it i'm talking about something very very deep say the divine mind of god when you start talking about the divine mind of god and you look at why we are here he began to say to me how so much of what he desires to say is lost in translation. Lost in translation. And it's lost in translation because you have carnal minded people trying to deliver something spiritual. Can I just, can I just, Apostle, can I just take my time and just walk in here? Carnal minded people. What do I mean by carnal minded people? I'm not talking about I'm not talking about drunks and people like that. I'm talking about people that have mastered the system of church. 
but haven't heard from heaven in a long time. And so now you've got a people that is coming to church that's got a heaven need and getting a church word. My God from Zion. So then the Lord now has to begin to orchestrate a reason. He has to handpick people and find people. He has to search all over the world. He has to look in every denomination, in every city, and see if there is one that I can find, that I can trust with the open heaven, that will not be afraid to take the people into the dimension so that they can have power for their own lives. I'm not hearing nobody say nothing that will deliver the people from the slavery, from the slavery, from the slavery and the false dependency on a system and not knowing the power of God and the mind of God and knowing that this power of God has a divine mind that would it speak, my God, it transcends every atmosphere and every fear. When the power of God really begins to speak from heaven down, there is no demonic force that can stand against it. There is no such thing as waiting to be delivered or waiting for God to work something out. When the presence drop in the building, every spirit comes subject to the divine mind. divine to the divine mind to the divine watch this to the divine mind of God the divine mind of God and so he starts out and he's he's talking to me long before apostle called me long before he called me I, I, I would I would go to meetings and I would go to preach and they would invite me for women's whatever or whatever they would invite me for and the Spirit of God would just take me over and something would happen where the word of the Lord would turn for the men and he didn't know that he didn't know that when he called me to ask me to come and I said God I said what are you what are you doing and he took me back and he said he said in the beginning of time and, and, and please let me explain this he said in the beginning of time when I created the heavens and the earth and all that dwells therein watch this he said there came a time in, in the spirit of my own mind Juanita that I wanted to see my mind in the earth realm and I couldn't put it in a donkey and I couldn't put it in a cow and I couldn't put it in a lamb I couldn't put it in a fish y'all ain't saying nothing but the first being that I decided to put it in was a man oh my god I got it I got it please somebody please please men men wherever you you are, don't miss this don't miss this don't miss this don't miss this because because you all were the first ones to know the thoughts of God and the mind my God from Zion to know the mind of God to know the spirit of God he said I created you and then I breathe the breath of life and when I look it up it said I breathe the pneuma life when I look it up it said I breathe divine intelligence my God from Zion I gave a man divine intelligence which means he can build anything he can do anything he can think anything he can solve anything yo come on i'm not here where is the men that where is the men that i, I can he, they can they can they can they can they can do anything because because i call them i call them i call them into my likeness wanted them to be like me and I 
wanted it to be so that when anybody looked at a man it looked like God if anybody would hear a man talk it sound like God anything that a man would create it looked like the creativity of God It looked like it looked like God, but let me make this point. Let me wait, wait, wait. It looked like God. It looked like God, and he said, he said, he said, the men that are in the earth realm that are in the spirit really don't know the power that they possess, and they don't know who they are. And I said, God, what do you mean? He said, the women have the ability to have a reproduction system. They got the system and the spirit and the power to reproduce from the man. He said, when I reached in him and took something out of him and put it in them, y'all ain't hearing me. I was able to take something in him and put it in them that causes them to become woe man, which means they can produce. But the reason why they can produce because I put the producer in them. Sit down. Sit down. The reason why the reason why you can have a baby is because of a man. The re I'm not hearing y'all. I'm not hearing y'all. The reason why you can have a child. I'm not hearing y'all. Because let me help you with something. When God created man, he wasn't thinking about a woman. He gave us a woman because man was going to be alone. But the mind of God was for a man. I'm not, no ladies, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Show kick up shandy. And that old shandy. I just want to see the hands of the men I'm talking to because because I I need you to understand what what God is saying. And somebody said, Well, I I don't I you well, well, well prophet is how how sure are you about this? So I reach inside of a man's ribs and I get a, I get, I get a piece of his ribs and, and I create woman. Watch this. Stay with me, cause I know you didn't heard it 50 million times, but stay with me. And so, and so now, there is woman. And so, then what happens is, you gotta look at the trend. You gotta look at everything that a woman does. Come on, somebody in the spirit. We are travelers and we are birthers and we and we are choirs and we are weepers and and and, and watch this, watch this. And we become pregnant with the vision and we give birth. But every time it is time for God to shift the church and take it to its next dimension, He does not use a woman. He uses a man. Ain't nobody saying amen in here. Ain't nobody saying amen in here. Maybe that's the reason why the church is looking like a freak right now. Because I'm not hearing y'all. I'm not because the devil is trying to castrate the power of the male in the church. He's trying to make y'all shut your mouth because he knows that if you shut your mouth, we can't go nowhere. All we can do is cry on the altar, produce to hell. I'm not hearing y'all shout, speak in tongue, but we can't shift this thing that God wants to do that I'm looking at in the last hour the revival will never take place without a man wait 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 mm -mm. Mm -mm. he gave me this he gave me this he gave me this he said he said but then let's let's read the male pedigree Let's read the male pedigree. Let's read it. Let's read the male pedigree. Okay. Let's start over. When God wanted to give us the lineage of wealth. Y'all ain't saying that. Gentiles. When God wanted to give us the lineage of wealth. It came through Abraham. 
Y'all ain't saying nothing. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. I really wish I had somebody, one man in here to say something. Come on here, somebody. Came through Abraham. Watch this. I want you to see something. And this really makes a lot of sense here. I said, God, what are you talking about? When I got ready to deliver the people out of Egypt, I didn't use Sister Moses. I used a man. Which means if the church is going to come out of Egypt, the men are going to have to rise up and walk us out. I'm not, I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. I wish I had somebody. I wish I had somebody in here that understood what I'm talking about. That coming out into deliverance is the job of the man to walk the church out of Egypt. That's why when they got out, Miriam was beating the tamarind. She was praising God for the victory that God had used the man of God to bring the church. I'm not, Lord, everybody, where is it? Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Okay, because see somebody saying right now, well, as hard as we done worked, watch this now, as hard as we done worked to get this thing to a level of equality, who's looking for equality when it is not the order of God? I'm not hearing y'all. A man can't do what we do and we can't do what they do. Can I just, can I just read a little bit more? Come on, come on, let's watch this, let's watch this, let's watch this. Let's watch this. Egypt came out of Egypt. Uh, well, 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 who met the voice of God uh, in a burning bush? Okay. Who did God talk to in a burning bush? Okay, let's take it further than that. When the voice of God was shut up in Israel and nobody had heard from God, who did God talk to first? He talked to Sammy. I'm not hearing y'all. I just wish somebody would just come on and understand what I'm trying to what I'm trying to say to the church right now. When the Lord, my God, needed worship and praise. Come on here. See, a lot of us say, well, you know what? Women worship and they praise God. But guess who demonstrated what it's like to bring the glory of God up? I'm not hearing y'all. God didn't choose a woman. He reached over and got David and told David, it's time to bring the glory back to the house. Who am I talking about? So what are you saying, prophetess? I'm saying it's time for the men to dance. I'm saying it's time for the men to shout. I'm saying it's time for the men to give God radical praise. Who am I preaching to right now? Yes, sir. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. When he got ready, when he got ready, and see, some people think it's a game. Uh -huh. We think it's a game. And that's why the Lord revealed it to me. He said, worship going to only go so far. He said, praise is going to only go so far. And you all will have what you all call an extraordinary experience from God. But you all will never tap the dimensions that are supposed to be tapped in the spirit realm. I'm not hearing y'all. Because men got on alligator shoes and sitting in church and acting like your job is to cross your legs. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. I just wish I had somebody. Because I remember back in the old days when the brothers would praise God. When the men would praise God. Until they praise him out of their jackets. Who am I? God, I wish I had a church in here right now. I hear the Holy Ghost saying that he getting ready to drop something on the men that the world ain't never seen. I hear the Holy Ghost say there's a praise that's about to come out of the belly of the men of God that's going to shake the very gates of hell. Demons are going to bed. Who am I preaching to? I wish somebody would say something. Watch this. 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 I just said that. Shake the gate of hell. Watch this. And I'm looking around the building. 
at all the women and half of them sitting there like you ain't talking to me no I'm talking about the results that you're going to get when this happens y'all ain't saying nothing I wish I had somebody in here to give God a shout I'm talking about what's about to happen to your ministry when the men rise up and the anointing of God charge their belly it's going to shift the house it's going to shift the church it's going to shift the praise it's going to shift the worship watch this watch this how do you know that? How do you watch this? I'm gonna say something. How do you know this? How do you know this? Okay, let's who let's see who God used. Let's see who God used. You know, some of us we get kind of upset about this because we say, Well, why do you, why do they keep saying, you know, because the spirit of the Lord is a spirit, and it's neither male nor female. You're right. But because God is a spirit and is neither male nor female, that doesn't change me into a man. Okay. That doesn't change me into a man when God starts using me. So let's not try to twist that up to make it look like it don't make no difference whether or not a man or a woman, praise God. It does make a difference because God called Solomon to run the biggest budget in the Bible. The Bible said that the glory of God fell in the temple until nobody could stand and worship because Solomon ran to the top of the pinnacle and he broke himself down on the altar and he began to pray if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves if they would now now watch this that's the first some of the first stages let me help you with this that was the first stages of the men some of the first stages of the men starting to operate in the prophetic because Solomon even stood up there and said and if they sin and if they fall by the wayside God if they just turn they face to this house I want you to forgive them and restore them y'all ain't saying nothing Solomon began to declare and decree that it doesn't matter what happens God if they just turn their face up because he spoke it before God who am I talking to when God got ready to raise up the valley of dry bones he called the prophet Elijah and he told him to prophesy I'm not hearing y'all but I heard the Lord say it's time for the men to prophesy it's time for the men to speak it it's time for the men to speak those things which be not as though they were watch this watch this I'm gonna give you a good example everybody sit down watch this watch this watch this watch this he gave us Ezekiel gave us the four dimensions of a man. He said, I looked in the spirit. And some of y'all said, well, what does this got to do with, what does this got to do with us? What does it got to do with everybody? Because if the men today decided to stand up, and I said stand up, I mean, really forget about yourself. I'm, I'm not hearing nobody. I, 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 no, I'm talking about forget about the fact that you are the person that's known in the church a bunch of foolishness that you know well Deacon Robinson don't praise God like that well no 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 I'm talking about I'm talking about like when David started praising God and his wife got mad and said you making a fool out of yourself I'm not hearing nobody but what happened was uh, David recognized uh, that it's been a long time since my house done seen the glory and I just want to know in here I know some of y'all men are saved uh, but how long has it been uh, since the power of God fell in your house up uh, how long has it been uh, since the anointing up uh, broke out over your children and if you're in this place today uh, and you want the power of God uh, to drop back in your family I'm gonna tell you uh, that that 
there is a praise that's about to come out of your belly that's going to ship you to another dimension. Somebody give God a praise. I said give God a praise. Somebody give him a praise. I feel a praise in the house. Come on, musician, help me. I feel a praise in the house. I said a praise. I said a praise. I said a praise. Just sit down for a second. Sit down for a second. Somebody said, Well, I don't think it take all that. I don't think, I don't think it take all that. David said, We've been without the glory for so long. And down there at Obed Edom's house, them people down there getting blessed. Wait a minute. I'm getting ready to say something. They getting blessed. Cause they got our glory no I'm here I just want to know is there anybody in the house that's ready to take your glory back is there anybody in the house that's ready to tell God I need your power I need your glory God fall down in my belly I gotta have the glory the anointing. Somebody give him a shout. Wait. Wait, wait, wait. Sit down. Sit down because I gotta, I gotta help us with this. It's called the demon of Lord help me. It's called the demon of the demon of the person that sit behind me. It's the demon of the person that's sitting next to me. Now here you are, been going through hell, and God set you in a divine moment, and God sits us in a divine time, and the Lord speaks in the house that he's getting ready to shift the body of Christ and put it back in order. Y'all ain't saying that. He ain't gonna have no more propped up bishops with a turn back collar, and you ain't got no power. He ain't gonna have no more deacons that ain't got the Holy Ghost for real. I wish I had somebody. He said, I'm getting ready to set it in order. I'm not hearing y'all. And when he set it in order, the power is going to hit every bench. The power is going to hit every house. The power is going to hit everybody. Somebody shout. Oh, Jesus. Wait, 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 wait. He said, I said, God, I said, are you for real? He said, do you not know that there are people that come to church and will not get their breakthrough and they feel it and they know it's their time because they are afraid of what somebody else going to think. I'm not hearing y'all. They are afraid of what they going to look like. But I'm here to tell y'all that every now and then, brother, you got to be willing to look like a fool because it's a moment in time that when the power drop, you got 60 seconds to agree with the power of God. Somebody in here, you are about to get a miracle. Somebody in this building, you are about to get a breakthrough. But in order to get something, you ain't never had. You got to do something. You ain't never done. Somebody shout. Wait. Sit down. When I say shout, let me help us with this. Sit down. Sit down. I don't want to get I don't want to get ahead of myself. I don't want to get ahead of myself. I didn't say praise. Let me, let me tell you what praise is. Let me tell you what church praise is. You say hallelujah. And then when the music stop, you stop because your Holy Ghost is connected to A flat. I'm not hearing y'all. I'm not hearing y'all because your Holy Ghost is connected to a piano. I'm not hearing y'all. 
because what the brothers don't understand today is that I saw this in the spirit uh, that on my way here uh, I saw men praising God uh, and it was as if the fire of God uh, split their chest open uh, and every heart's desire uh, that they had uh, God brought it to pass uh, I'm here to tell you tonight uh, that if you are man in this house uh, if you got something uh, that you need God to do uh, are you to praise him? I'm talking about a real praise. Come on here and shout. Shout out of your fire. Shout out of your spirit. Wait. 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 Give me some horns or something else. Because that ain't going to get it. Because I hear a heavenly sound. I hear a heavenly sound. I hear heavenly sound. I hear see some of y'all say, "What well, this means? Revival." Let me tell you what that means. Let me tell you what that means. That means everything that the devil stole from you before tonight. He got to give it back sevenfold. You don't understand what I'm saying. I'm not just talking about revival in your spirit. I'm talking about revival in your bank account. I'm talking about revival in your family. Somebody better shout. My God, I feel you in here. Who am I preaching to? Who am I preaching? You better stop praising God. sit down I asked the Lord watch this I asked the Lord I said well why is it that a lot of people and men 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 y'all men come on now men why is it that why is it that men don't really seem to have this this thing like they know how to give God a praise out of their spirit and the Lord said to me it's religious hereditary you know they say they inherited from they dead bishop and then they inherited that from their dead father I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me it ain't nothing more that the devil is afraid of than a free man with a power of praise in his belly I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me because see, it goes back to slavery they said if you can enslave the men you got the whole family if you can keep the men stop praising them I got the whole family if I can bind the men I bind the strong man I can take the whole house but is there anybody in here tonight that's saying not my house not my family not my mind not my career somebody give God a shot not my ministry not my praise somebody give him a shot slavery wait slavery now let me say this slavery slavery Wait, wait, slavery. Slavery. We got free from slavery and then became slaves. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. We got free from slavery and then became a slave to the front row. And then became a slave to our position. Then became a slave to being a bishop. A bishop to the point that you can't even praise God because you think it's something to sit propped up. I'm not hearing you all, but the last bishop in the Bible that sat propped up. God knocked him over and broke his neck because he was a hindrance to the glory of God. And he sent Samuel to prophesy that it's time for a change. Anybody in this building that know it's time for a change, go to praise and God for real. You see that? I said, I said, no, 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 sit down for a second. I got to see this. I got to say this. Because I learned something. I learned something. He said to me, people have missed their miracles. Watch this. Because they do things their way. 
I'm not here nobody talk to me. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not here nobody. It's almost like it's a, it's a silent law in the church. Because I'm looking at it right now. I'm looking at men sitting all over this place. And some of y'all ain't moved. And then you say, well, I don't holler like that. You a line wonder because you holler like that at the football game. And you ain't got the Holy Ghost. You holler like that at the baseball game. In other words, you holler at what you want to holler at. So what you telling God is I don't want to holler at you. And God going to tell you too. I don't want to holler at you when your kids get in trouble. I don't want to holler at you when you need a breakthrough. I don't want to holler at you because when I told you to holler, you told me you didn't feel like it. You don't tell the baseball game I don't feel like it. You don't tell the football game I don't feel like it. And they can't do nothing for you. But God who gave you breath. God who gave you life. God who gave you strength. You better open your mouth and learn how. I don't holler like that. Wait, wait, I said I gotta work with this. Cause I don't I don't feel it. Wait, wait, I don't I don't feel it. I don't watch this. I don't I don't feel nothing. So I don't holler. So what you're saying to me is that the football game got the power to make you feel something that God can't make you feel. Now I'm not here nobody talk to me because I don't see I got a brother and I got cousins and I don't seen y'all at the pure fool. I don't seen y'all paint your face and stand all up on the living room couch. I don't seen y'all break lamps in the auntie's house. I don't seen y'all tear a den up. I don't seen y'all bust a leather on the couch. I don't seen y'all throw stuff at the TV. I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me. You do it because you're inspired by your team. But I'm gonna tell you what God is about to do for you. Oh my God, you better learn how to holler for the right team. You better tell the Lord over here. Don't miss me. Don't pass me by. Over here. Somebody say, what you mean? What you mean? What you mean over here? I went, well, I went to a graduation. Uh -huh. I went to my niece's graduation. Uh -huh. And it was on the football field. Uh-huh. And so I got there a little earlier than my other family did. And so I went and got us some seats. And it was up in a stadium, a high school. Place was packed. I saw my family when they walked in the, in the side of the stadium. And they didn't see me. And so I got up on the bleacher. And I start waving my hand. And then all of a sudden I saw somebody say, that she is over there. Y'all ain't saying nothing. It's too many men that need God to do something for y'all. But I'm not here to, I'm not here to make you praise. I'm here to tell you that when you wave your hands, what you say in the God, here I am over here. When you start passing out raises, here I am. When you start passing out jobs, here I am. When you start passing out college degrees, when my kids need to get their college paid, over here, God, I'm praising you in advance. Somebody give him a praise. Give him a 60 second praise. Give him a 60 second. Every man. Every. Every. I want all the ladies to sit down. I want all the men to stand up. I want all the women to sit down. I want all the men to stand up. I want all the men to stand up. I want, I want all the men to stand up. Hey, Shakya. And, and see, the sad thing about it, the, the sad thing about it is, you know, I, I told God, coming here in the car, I said, God, I said, you something else. 
I said, here you are. You are. Uh, you call us. And uh, you uh, took the rib out of the man and made a woman. I said, you something else. I said, then you go all the way down through the lineage of David. I said, then you choose Mary. Watch this. I said this in the car coming here. And I had to chuckle at myself. I said, you chose Mary. Got her pregnant by divinity. And she didn't have no girl. She had a boy. No, y'all ain't saying nothing. No, y'all ain't saying nothing. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. What am I trying to say to every man in here? I'm trying to say, tag you it. I'm trying to say in your worst day, you got favor with God that you don't even know you got. I'm trying to tell every man in here, on the worst day, when you feel like your life is all flipped up, you still got favor. Because God said, I'm not a man that I should lie. Neither am I a man that I would repent. I'm not going to take back what I did. I'm not going to take back that I made you. That's why every man in here, I don't care what state your life is in, I'm going to prophesy to you that favor is sitting on your life right now. And if you would just give God a praise, you will see him open stuff that's been shut. You will see him open doors that's been shut. All the men, every man give him a shout. I did say, every man, give him a shout. But this is what I'm, this is what just hit my spirit. He said, back in the old church, the old church, I ain't talking about this modern church. I ain't talking about this church right now. Back in the old church, they, the pastor would preach. And when it was time, for what they call praise service. Let me do it backwards now. We have a praise team and we had a choir. Well, back in the old day, they had testimony service. Yeah. Yes, sir. I'm not getting nobody to say amen right there. They had testimony service, our brother Ricky. And uh, they had testimony service. And then the pastor would get him a reader and he would preach line on line uh-huh he would preach it word by word sometimes it would take him weeks to finish one scripture i'm just trying to see if the old church is in here because i know y'all in here hiding i'm not here nobody I know the old church is in here. Some of y'all sitting here acting like you just came to God and, and you are part of the worship. No, you're from the old church and you know it. Uh huh. Uh, no, 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 no. You're from the old church and you know it. And how do I know it? Because some of y'all don't even want to praise God. But when I see people do this, I know you're from the old church. Uh huh. I know you don't want to pray. When I see people go, no, you from the old church. You just trying to pretend like you got a brand new praise. I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me. But the Holy Ghost said something is about to drop in the kingdom. That the men is going to ignite the old sanctified praise. That the men is going to start a charge that's going to make the women jealous. Because my God from Zion, I know what I see in here. I said, okay. I said, what do you... He said, go back. He said, look at the old church. And the pastor get through preaching. And when he get through preaching, he said, now everybody, this is my pastor. Now everybody, everybody get ready. That's what I tell you, get ready. And if you're in front of a church, you'll be saying, get ready for what? Everybody get ready. Get your heart and your mind ready. Because we're getting ready to praise God. We get ready to go to God. Everybody get ready. Because we get ready to go to God. And when the pastor would say that, it would be like a silent code. Can I tell the brothers what the silent code was? It would be like a silent code. And I can see it as plain as I'm standing here talking. When the pastor would say, everybody get ready, the brothers would start taking off their jackets. 
they start taking off their ties they start rolling their sleeve up like they getting ready to go to work i'm not hearing nobody i'm not hearing nobody talk to me and and guess what listen listen i'm coming in this building as humble as i possibly know how but the holy ghost showed me that i'm to lay hands on some of your men and that when i do he's going to ignite your vision again he's going to bring your prophecy back to life but he said do it for the ones that's going to get ready i'm not giving you there come a time when it's time to take your towel off uh -huh. it comes a time when it's time to come out your jacket who am i talking to there comes a time when it's time for the men of god to come back down to the altar and say god make me over again you did it in genesis now do it now god revive me again god restore me again baptize me again who am i preaching to right now i said who am i preaching to come on who am i preaching to come on who am i preaching to i'm looking for the men i'm talking to i'm looking for the men i'm talking to uh -huh. he said yeah so if i'm talking to you if, if i'm talking to you move move my table out the way move it out move it out the way uh-huh get my socks yes lord because see some of y'all let me help the women with something right now god gonna do something for your man that you've been praying for god to do god shot heaven shot god he almost shot the Holy Ghost said women you done talked enough he said now what I want y'all to do is behold a miracle because when they leave this altar they're not gonna be the same I'm not giving no woman praise God in here you gotta give God a praise in this place something something getting ready to happen you got to take your tie off because if you're too dressed up I, 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 take your tie off uh, take your vest off dig it take take your vest take your tie off roll your roll your sleeves up because what i'm telling your head oh shanda come on hush baby see i just want to know the hands of the men that said prophet you can lay hands on me I want to see the hands of the men that's going to say prophets you can lay hands on me no come on i want to see the hands of the man that said you can lay hands on me i, I ain't shame i'm not shame i'm not shame i'm not shame for god to do it in me because i'm here to tell y'all i see it i see it in the holy ghost some of y'all when i pray for you god gonna baptize you again because some of y'all ain't spoken a while some of y'all ain't spoken tongues in a while some of y'all haven't had a refreshing in a while but this is what i want you to do this is what i want you to do my god from zion i need everybody that's in the choir stand to do me a favor will y'all do me a favor will y'all do me a favor will y'all just come down out the choir stand y'all brothers can stay up there y'all can stay up there and i want you to stay under me i don't care if i stop don't you stop where's the drummers at because the holy ghost said a old school a old school anointed get me to drop in here and the reason why i'm asking y'all to come out the choir stand because because y'all can't stand there staring at them because what god get me to do in them the holy ghost wants y'all to break out he says some of y'all men ain't cried in a while ain't nobody looking at you ain't nobody stunned you he said because there's something that you've been desiring to happen in your spirit and tonight it's gonna happen he said there's a breakthrough that you've been looking for in your spirit and tonight it's gonna happen how many men want it tonight no i said how many men want it tonight somebody say wait a minute hold on i need i need every woman i need every woman and i can tell you right now I can tell you right now I can tell you right now this is going to take five minutes watch this I said this is going to take five minutes I didn't hear nobody say that turn around and grab a man by the hand both of their hands like a brother like a brother one man by the hand 
one man and look at him in their face. Look at him in their face. Look at him in their face. Look at my face. And tell them, say, brother, brother, I love you. And this is something that I really want for you too. Because I want you to know the power that's in your life. And so tonight, I'm going to praise him for you. And I want you to praise him for me. And when prophet is lay hands on me, I'm going to be praising because I know what God is doing for you. Because tonight, we go going to another level. Come on, look at your partner and tell him that. We go going to another level. Tonight is our night for a breakthrough. Come on, tell somebody, tonight is my night. Tonight is my night. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. If, if you wear glasses, take your glasses off. Put them in your pocket. And I just heard the Holy Ghost say, some of y'all standing in here, your brother ain't here, your daddy ain't here, your cousin ain't here, but God said your son ain't here. But he said, woman, if you praise God for the men that's on this altar, I'm going to release angels to go and find that man that's in your life that you've been praying for. And I'm going to deliver them tonight. Come on, turn the music up. Come on, everybody. When I come to three, every man, start praising God. Take your glasses off. Take your glasses off. Put them in your pocket. Take your glasses off. Put them in your pocket. Take your glasses off your face. Hey, Shaya. I don't want nothing in your way. Because God showed me this. He said it's going to take five minutes. Your life ain't going to never be the same. Your life ain't going to never be the same. You've been running from God for a long time. People been here, Shokabaha. You a backslidden preacher. He Kabo Shanda. You a Mokobo Shende. Hande Beheye. There's a prophetic anointing on your life. You known in your family that if you say something gonna happen, it's gonna happen. And the Holy Ghost said tonight, I drew you in this place because I'm getting ready to restore you. I'm getting ready to restore your mind. I'm getting ready to restore your life. Everything that the devil did to try to tear your life up God gonna give it back to you and as I lay my hands on you I decree it to be so huh? somebody give God a shot the darling shot wait a minute every man when I say shout I want you to shout like a warrior I don't want you to shout like a girl I'm not hearing nobody talk to me I didn't hear nobody talk to me I want to know that there's some men on this altar when I say shout I want you to give God a war shout I want you to give them a shout that says God I want you to hear this shout because it's coming out of my belly and I'm shouting for my family I'm shouting for my career I'm shouting for my destiny are you ready are you ready women one I decree it and declare it I speak it now I speak it now that revelation would fall from heaven to upon the hand of the enemy I curse you now I curse the generational curse I curse it at the root I call it out of your mind I call it out of your belly I break every addiction I break alcohol I break drugs I break homosexuality I break it up in the mighty name of Jesus I break it up I break pornography I break pornography I break perversion in the name of Jesus get ready free receive it shout 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 Shout, 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 sh
this palms up palms up if you don't mean it don't lift your hand but turn them like this turn them like this stretch them out let me tell you this ever since I came from Africa every word man of God that God has given me not one word have fallen to the ground not one word a woman in my church was hit 
in an accident almost every bone in her body broken and she came to church out of a coma after eight months God said walk over to her and all I want you to do is command every limb to line up with God and he said and then I want you to say these words the doctors are going to be astonished and they're going to call it a miracle one week later she went to take exams and everything had put itself back together y'all better come over here and give God a I can't get nobody to shout right there Pastor Browning Apostle the Lord gave me this two Sundays ago he said everywhere you go be careful where you go that's why when you called me when you did I said okay this is quick but the Lord said everywhere you go he gave me a prophecy that had broken out in our church in such a way that I can't even preach the testimonies be lined up around the building because the Lord said to tell the people oh Jesus to tell the people to turn around and say to a neighbor God is about to break your net no 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 y'all didn't hear me y'all didn't hear me when the disciples said to Jesus we've been fishing all night and we ain't caught nothing but nevertheless at thy word I'm gonna cast it again and I said God what does that mean he said tell the people that I want them to cast their net one more time and tell them that they net is the hardest praise that they can give God and he said when they do tell your neighbor God is about to break your net and I promise you in 48 hours miracles is going to start and not stop somebody turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor God is about to break your net Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I said, tell your neighbor that God is about to break your net. And some of y'all praising God, like I told you to quote a Sunday school scripture. I'm talking about people in my ministry that went and got cars with bad credit. And the bank said, I don't even know why I'm doing this, but I'm going to do it. I'm talking about I'm talking about unspeakable miracles. I'm talking about a man came and didn't have a place to live and somebody gave him a five bedroom house. No, you don't hear what I'm saying. The Lord told me everywhere I plant my feet that my feet would break the net. And I'm here to tell you, you better not give God no regular praise. Because everybody in here that lose yourself and give God a shout for real, I'm telling you, he's about to break. He's about to break you. He's about to break your neck. My God! It's broken! It's broken! It's broken! What am I saying? He said... before Friday go apply again cause I'm turning no's into yeses I didn't hear nobody talk to me y'all didn't respond he said go back and apply again I wish I had just seven people he said I'm turning every no 
everybody in this building that's ever been turned down you can let it be turned up I'm not giving y'all I'm oh my people wait a minute first of all raise your hand if you receive what God is saying now second of all I need you to look to your left and your right and this is real important if the person that you're looking at on your left or your right is giving God this kind of praise I want you to hurry up and move your seat because you're standing next to a miracle killer down the street the other day and the Holy Ghost fell on me and I just lifted my hands up and I said Lord I thank you I thank you for unexpected checks and two minutes later my phone vibrated and my niece said somebody just sent you five thousand dollars y'all ain't saying nothing my aunt called me today and said somebody made a deposit of seventy five hundred dollars into your account and the bank don't even know where it came from but I know where it came from I go on my son it came from heaven I'm not giving y'all I said we are in the season for miracles all you got to do is bless his name I said to my church and maybe this doesn't apply to y'all I said to my church I said if you got another way lady right there in the red jacket I see it on you Bobby Ashanda here I see ya I just saw something drop on you a door just opened for you favor just hit your family Shocker! Favor just hit you. The Holy Ghost just told me to tell you, woman, that your worst days are behind you. Your best days are yet to come. Somebody give God a prayer. Let me help you with this. Let me help you with this. Let me help you with this. So I said. The Lord said, I'm going to break your net. And I stood in the middle of the church and I said, the testimonies is going to be wrapped around this building. And I'm going to stand in this building, confident, unshaken, that the testimonies for the next 39 days is not going to stop. Starting now. Let me, 
let me let me teach about 21 people how to get it when I just said that the testimonies for the next 39 days every single day for the next 39 days God's gonna give you a miracle favor a breakthrough now let me show you how to get it he says starting now well what do you mean because I'm in church this is where you pull it down this is where you pull it down you open up your mouth and you start praising God somebody shout come on men shout us in come on men shout us in the miracles come on brothers shout us into the breakthrough When I said that, and I'm, I'm getting ready to go, I saw a vision. I saw a vision, y'all. How many people listening? How many people listening? I saw a vision. I saw a vision of the medieval days when they would get ready to take over a city. And the big door would be bulldozed shut. And all the men would grab a hold to one big tree and they would keep running at one time into the door and backing up and running into the door with the bulldozer until they broke the door down how many of y'all have seen that before on TV that's what I just saw in the spirit he said this next praise the men is gonna break the door down for us he said this next praise when I say shout Everybody gonna shout, but the men gonna break the door down. So Cuba City, somebody shout! Come on, men! Break the door down! Break the door down! Break it down! Break it down! The same girl, they said that something in her, there was a, a something that they put in her liver and it wouldn't line up. And Sunday we said to everybody, put your hand on your side and tell the liver to shift. And the whole church, we put our hand on our side and told the liver to shift. And by eight o'clock that night, the doctor called and said, the liver shift. Now, wait a minute. Let me help you with this. So I'm on my way here today and I'm getting ready to walk out of the house. And this is one reason why, Pastor Browning, why I couldn't catch the earlier flight. I got a text that said she was in the hospital and had just slipped into a coma. My sister said, I'm getting on the plane and I gotta cut my phone off. But Kai just slipped into a coma. When she said that, they were waiting on me to get my stuff together. She slipped into a coma and I slid on my face. I hit the floor like somebody had knocked me down. I slid on my face. And I talked her back out of that coma. And by the time I, by the time they called me to tell me that I was on the next flight, the doctor said, I don't know what happened. But she done woke up out the coma and got up out the bed. And now she walking around. What am I trying to say? I'm trying to say that a miracle anointing dropped in this place. It followed me here. If you would just bless God, I see God healing. I see cancer going up. I see HIV going up. Somebody open up my God I feel it. I need somebody to shout right now.
is in here. It's in here. The reason why I done backed up, my niece called me today when I landed and said, so and so, so and so, I want you to come and preach. And before I can even say I pray about it, I said, nope. She said, so and so, so and so, I want you. I said, nope. And she said, well, Auntie Nita, why you keep saying no? I said, because I got to go among miracle mindsets. I don't want to be with church people no more. Can I just say that again? I don't want to stand in the choir next to a church person. I want to stand in the choir next to a person with a miracle mind. I don't want to come to church and sit on the bench next to a church member. I want to sit on the bench and look over at somebody and say, you ready? Because I'm ready. You ready for a miracle? Well, come on, let's give them a praise. Because in the next 60 seconds, something is about to happen in the building. Who am I talking to? I'm tired of the same old, same old. I got to have a breakthrough. I got to have a miracle. I got to have the impossible. And the reason why I say that because I went the other day to the bank when I called you pastor we called, and I went to get a I went to get a new truck and my sister was with me and I said come go with me and she said you want me to go with you I said you said well need to go on by yourself I said no you come on go with me and so I'm sitting in the bank I said I don't want to be around nobody that ain't got a miracle mindset because I just may need a miracle from you and you just may need to and you just may need a miracle from me and I got to make sure I'm not standing next to nobody dried up that's gonna come up how y'all ain't saying that but that's gonna come a Sunday in here it's gonna look like a chess game because people gonna be moving their seats all over the building you're gonna say I thought you were sitting over there no baby it's too dead over there today I thought you were sitting over there no they too dry over there I got to come sit right here where I feel the fire because I need a miracle I need a breakthrough I need somebody that know how to pull up on the anointing until the fire falls somebody give God a I said, I said come go with me and I'm sitting there and the man closed closing my deal on a Range Rover and the man said well thank you Miss Bynum he said I appreciate it and the lady said if I can ever do anything for you and then the lady looked over at my sister and said well, what, what are you here for? And she said, well, I'm with her. I want y'all to get this. She said, I'm with her. And the lady said, well, what you need? And my sister said, I'm with her. I said, she need a truck too. And then I said to the lady, and she ain't got good credit. And my sister need a truck. And the lady looked at my sister and looked back at me. And she said, I'm going to do it because you with her. I'm going to do it because of what I sense on y'all. No, no, see, see what y'all don't understand is something dropping on y'all tonight. And when you go back to the bank, they're not going to do it because of your credit. I'm not giving y'all. They're going to do it because of presence. The presence of the miraculous is dropped in the building because the men that push the door down, somebody give God a shot. sister walked out of the bank with a cat like Escalade y'all ain't saying that. so I went back to the bank and I said I know one more person that need a car 
And somebody said to me, well, what you doing? I said, the door is open. And when the door is open, you grab everybody and walk them through it. And I'm here to tell y'all in this building, my neck done broke and I'm throwing everybody fish. I'm not giving y'all. And all you got to do tonight is start praising God because I'm here to tell y'all that everybody in this building is getting ready to come on a 39 day Christmas. I'm not giving y'all. Y'all don't understand what I'm saying. It's going to start at 12 o'clock midnight tonight for the next 30. You believe it man of God do you believe it I see it I see it on you your whole life getting ready to change favor is coming back on your life God opened up a door for you and you get ready to get a new job ha! somebody okay 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 when I, when I touch that man, I just hit the button for new jobs. These people don't believe me. Pastor, I called my goddaughter a week ago and I said, the Holy Ghost said, you got to get on a plane. She lives in Dallas. I said, get near me. I said, because new doors. And she had just started a job at Chase Bank as a clerk. And she came to the church and the power of God was like it was in here tonight. She got back on the plane and went back home and when she got back to work the next day, the lady called in the office and said, there's something about you. I'm raising your salary to $67,000. I'm putting you in the management program. Usually you have to have a college degree, but I don't know what I'm doing, I'm just doing it. Another one of my daughters, when I said I feel the job button, went back to work and they raised her salary to $145,000 a year. I said, and I'm gonna say it one more time, I see jobs shifting, I see raises, I see new jobs, I see new positions. You gotta praise him right now because the button just got pushed. And guess what? He gonna make room for you. Guess what? You ain't gonna even be qualified, but they gonna hire you because of what's on you. Somebody give God a shot. It's when I leave here, when I leave this ministry, testimonies, start writing your notes and say, can you get this to pastor? Because I'm telling you, testimonies like you ain't never heard of, debt cancellations. Some of y'all, some of y'all, I'm gonna sit lady back there with that black and white on, right there with them glasses, touch debt cancellation. How? Shock it! Have some? Now see, you a real smart lady, cause you went over there and shouted next to her. I double dare somebody to go touch her because I said debt cancellation. I saw it on her. I saw it on her. Can I tell y'all the secret? The men, the men done broke open something in this building. I said, and I just heard the Holy Ghost said that if he can get a commitment out of 21 men, and each man would represent 21 days and watch this and anything you do for 21 days it is known to change your life 
anything that you practice for 21 days will change your life God said if I can get 21 men to commit to the next 21 Sundays I don't care what happened I'm gonna give God praise I don't care who's looking at me I don't care what they say I don't care what nobody say I don't care what I feel like because the Holy Ghost said that it's gonna keep a door open and after the 21st Sunday see some of y'all don't believe that but he spoke to me and told me he said I want you Juanita to give $300 every Sunday for 21 for 21 uh, Sundays and after every week I'm gonna show you a miracle and I promise y'all every single week uh, the very next day on Monday God does something that blows my mind because the Lord said uh, that there will be no more delays uh, when he prophesied uh, it will come to pass uh, who am I talking to I said with speed uh, like the speed of lightning uh, I need those men to start praising God right now I gotta go because I feel something. I feel something. I feel something crazy. Man of God, up there in that balcony, you right there. You was running a few minutes ago. I want you to go all the way over there. Walk all the way over to the end. All the way over to the end. Hurry up if you can do it right quick. Uh huh. I want you to turn around and look at me. And when I say go, I want you to take that same run and go all the way around on the other side of the balcony. And God said when you get over on the other side of the balcony, everything you running for is done. Hey, shut up. Go! Somebody get go. Go! Go! Go get it! Go get it! Go get it! Somebody better help him. Here it comes. Here it comes. The end of debt. Money falling. A new house. A new car. A new job. Somebody praise him. Somebody shout. 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 Lord told me when I came back from Africa he said I've restored to you the gift you had when you were 16 where I see like crystal glass he restored my gift back to me where I see like crystal glass and I promise you there's some people here from my church raise your hand if I say I see it, and I say it, do it not come to pass. Somebody said, well, well, how does she know that? He has restored my sight crystal clear. I see stuff like, like a movie in front of me. And I'm here to tell y'all, that man that was running, he gonna get a new house. He gonna get a new job. And not just one car, but two cars. All right, y'all. Now, if you was real smart, you would jump in on his prophecy. I didn't hear nobody. I said, if you was real smart, you would jump in on his prophecy. And you would tell the Lord, me too. And you would... Wait. Let me show you how to get a miracle. A friend of mine got a Range Rover and when I saw it as soon as I saw it I said oh my god oh this is so bad oh my god and I jumped in the truck and I was like oh I know how to work everything in here because I had one of the oh my god oh you better go girl let's go for a ride and I praise God and two weeks later I got the same truck, the same color, because I celebrated. I sat down in somebody else's miracle, and I started praising God, and it rocked up on me. That's why you better praise God right now. Because
because something is rubbing off on you from somebody else. 